In 1509, Juan Garrido was the first West African to set foot on the island of Borinquen, or Puerto Rico as it is known today. Born in West Africa to an African king, he went to Portugal as a young man. He then went to Spain, converted to Catholicism, and chose the name Juan Garrido. Soon after, he accompanied Juan Ponce de Leon as a conquistador on a Spanish expedition to conquer the Caribbean, which included Puerto Rico. He would also later join Hernan Cortez and the conquest of Mexico. Garrido was among the earliest Africans to reach Puerto Rico. He was one of the numerous West Africans who had joined expeditions from Spain to the Americas. From the beginning of Spanish presence in the Americas, West Africans participated as voluntary expeditionaries, conquistadors, and auxiliaries. Unfortunately, however, most of the West Africans that would make their way to Puerto Rico would do so through the transatlantic slave trade. Originally, the Spanish enslaved the Taino in Puerto Rico. However, due to the decimation of the majority of the Taino population on the island as a result of disease, they came to rely on African slavery to staff their gold mining and fort building operations on the island. By 1555, over 15,000 Africans were brought to Puerto Rico. When the gold mines in Puerto Rico were declared depleted, the Spanish crown no longer considered the island to be a high colonial priority. Its chief ports were then transformed primarily as a garrison to support naval vessels. The Spaniards also encouraged free people of color from British and French possessions in the Caribbean to immigrate to Puerto Rico to provide a population base to support the Puerto Rican garrison. In 1789, a decree was issued by the Spanish Crown that allowed slaves to earn or buy their freedom. However, this did little to help their situation, as there would later be a surge in sugarcane plantations which would require more slaves. The expansion of sugarcane plantations drove up demand for labor, and the slave population increased dramatically as new slaves were imported. It is estimated that by 1800, as many as 40,000 more African slaves were brought to Puerto Rico. According to some historians, the largest contingent of African slaves came from the areas of present-day Ghana, Togo, Benin, and Nigeria. All these current countries are located in the Gulf of Guinea area, which was also known as the Slave Coast. The large majority were Yoruba, and Igbo, ethnic groups from Nigeria, and Bantu from the Guinea. The living conditions for African slaves in Puerto Rico were harsh and inhumane. They were subjected to grueling labor on sugar plantations, construction sites, and households, enduring physical and psychological abuse. Their work entailed long hours, extreme weather conditions, and minimal rest. Slaves were often provided with limited food and shelter, lacking basic human rights, and living in constant fear of punishment. In spite of the oppressive environment, enslaved Africans in Puerto Rico demonstrated immense resilience and defiance. Acts of resistance and rebellion were prevalent, highlighting the determination of individuals seeking freedom. Resistance took various forms, including workplace sabotage, arson, organizing secret gatherings, and preserving African cultural practices secretly. The Palenques, secret communities of escaped slaves that developed in remote areas of the island, represented a powerful testament to the determination of Africans in search of freedom. The road to freedom was a long and gradual process in Puerto Rico. In 1776, the Spanish crown implemented the Free Womb Law, granting freedom to children born to enslaved mothers. This law marked an important step towards the abolition of slavery, leading to increased freedom for many individuals over time. However, it wasn't until 1873 and the wake of the Spanish abolitionist movement that the institution of slavery was abolished entirely in Puerto Rico. The process was 
catalyzed by the activism and resistance of both enslaved individuals and abolitionist groups. It's also important to note that there were some major differences in the slavery system between the Spanish and the English. In the English colonies, the legal status of enslaved Africans was primarily based on race. As chattel property, they were seen as permanent slaves with limited rights and no legal protections. In the Spanish colonies, there was more legal flexibility. Some enslaved Africans managed to gain freedom through military service, conversion to Christianity, or intermarriage with free people. However, despite it being less harsher than under the English or American system, the legacy of African enslavement in Puerto Rico persists to this day. After the abolition of slavery, many freed slaves faced significant challenges integrating into society. In spite of this, the resilience and cultural contributions of Puerto Ricans of African descent have shaped the island's identity and enriched its cultural heritage. African cultural elements such as music, dance, religion, and cuisine continue to thrive as an integral part of Puerto Rican culture. It is also important to recognize that the average Puerto Rican carries between 15 to 20 percent West African DNA. Some have more and some may have less, but nevertheless, it is an important part of the Puerto Rican identity. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Help us to spread this video by sharing. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more videos.